cost and satisfaction and being able to cost him and um, Mrs. Pinkert as well. I think they are for the first time in Bucharest and in any case for the first time in the Europe College. On my behalf and of course on behalf of the rector of this institute who now enjoys the amenities of the Wissenschaft College in Berlin where I presume you've met. Uh, so that's why he left me on, in charge. Um, we are, <laughs> uh, and I'm trying my best to be a modest substitute. <laughs> Um, and uh, to say how pleased that we are to, to have this, uh, to, to have the possibility of, of hosting this conference for a number of reasons. One is that uh, Professor Pinkert is a distinguished specialist in Hegel and in German uh, philosophy in general. Uh, so we are very happy to, <laughs> to enjoy this knowledge. Another is that the topic he wants to address, I think, is very close to many of us. Uh, hereabouts, we know a bit about what went wrong, so I think that this will be a very really instructive lecture from this point of view. Uh, and also, I must say that we are um, currently hosting a fellowship program which deals, well, the general theme is uh, ideologies and trends of thought in 20th century and their historic roots, so I think that uh, the topic of this. Uh, talk intersects in a very interesting way with this fellowship program, so there are some of the fellows who will feel that they, in any case, have something to learn and even say about these things. Not least because Wissenschaft's colleague to the room from which Professor Pinkard now comes is a kind of godfather to us, and so we are very happy to, to share uh, guests. And uh, also because it's an opportunity to, to collaborate with the Institute for the research of the crimes uh, of communism, uh, which uh, is of which we have now to this academic director. So there are many reasons for our satisfaction to be able to host this event today. Since uh, Mihai is at the origin of this invitation and he has organized the Soviet stay, I will leave the rest in I mean, thank you all, thank you, Professor Pinkar. Um, I think this is a, a, an important event in the academic life of, of the Romanian uh, community, particularly because, as pro pro Professor Orogano said, uh, the subject of uh, totalitarian thinking, the interest in Marxism is quite uh, strong, among, especially among uh, young academics, as we can notice. It is, I think, uh, an extremely gratifying moment for us, for the institute I'm representing, because we are hosting indeed, I would say, the most important scholar in Hegelian studies, uh, certainly someone who has transformed the understanding, our understanding of Hegel's work, and also of the post-Hegelian uh, ideological and philosophical movements. Uh, Professor Pinkhart uh, from Georgetown University from the United States um, has written a number of books, essays, articles that deal with Hegel in particular, um, from the metaphysical, um, ethical, pragmatic, political, social dimension of, uh, of, of Hegel's work, uh, to the biographical uh, aspects, which are quite intricate in themselves. If you'd like just to uh, uh, guess uh, the substantial contribution of Prof Prof Professor Pinkard's uh, work, uh, to, our, to, a, to a better understanding of Hegel, I think it would be enough to look at this volume, perhaps to wait, and uh, you would soon discover that it's, it's something that one cannot possibly miss. I think it's a great event for uh, uh, New York College and for the Institute for the Investigation of the Communist Crime, the Communist Past. Uh, and without uh, much further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Derek Pinkard to present his lecture, and then, of course, I kindly invite you to join in and to have a debate about the legacy of Hegel in uh, the 19th century. Hegel remarked what went wrong. And of course, there are so many things that went wrong uh, that one, it would be difficult actually to have a talk that would last only one or two days. So I'm more interested here in outlining what I take it to be the central issue, which is the accusation that Marx had about Hegel, that Hegel, unfortunately, was an idealist and that Marx transformed him into a realist. So here we are. This is just to give us a little, this is a picture of Hegel. 
Uh, Hegel in 1829. This is a picture sketched one afternoon at the Mendelssohn household. Uh, that Felix Mendelssohn's sister Fanny had married an artist, Delphine Hensel, who went around sketching everyone. Heinrich Heine was there that day, Hegel was there that day, Edward Gans was here that day. And you might say history was knocking on the door of the Mendelssohn household as they all sat down to listen to a new string quartet by the teenage Wunderkind of German music, Felix Mendelssohn, who was also Hegel's student at the time. Marx claimed, of course, famously, he said, I found Hegel standing on his head and I put him on his feet. Now, of course, what counts as upside down and what counts as right side up depends on what attitude you're looking at. It could have been that Marx was upside down, Hegel was right side up, and Marx tried to turn both of them upside down. Uh, a cartoon uh, of Hegel, Marx build, rebuilding philosophy on top of Hegel's head with Hegel looking rather sad. This is a cartoon, by the way, from the mid-1970s from the New York Review of Books here. Now, what I want to argue very simply is that Hegel was right and Marx was wrong. Uh, that, in fact, you should stay an idealist and not become a materialist, as Marx said. Now, first, what was it that Marx found attractive in Hegel? What kinds of things did he and Hegel share in common? Well, at least two things, both of which I'm going to contest. Both he and Hegel I thought that we could speak of entire forms of life. Uh, Hegel uses two different German terms for this. He sometimes calls it a living form. That was the term also that Wittgenstein used. He also uses the term Gestalt des Lebens, which really means the same thing. This is a particularly Hegelian use. That there are entire forms of life that periodically from time to time break down. This is a key element of the Western experience of history. It is the experience of the loss of antiquity. That once there was a form of life, ancient Greece, with its own religion, its art, and so on, and it broke down. It broke down, it's gone, it's vanished. Nobody worships Apollo or Zeus anymore. Uh, and it got replaced by something else, Rome, which then fell apart and broke down. It turned out not to have worked. And then this was subsequently followed by the Catholic Middle Ages, which broke down, didn't work. So there's a fundamental experience of what, let me use the term, of what happens when a form of life becomes uninhabitable. That is, when the people living in that form of life can no longer see themselves in it. They cannot live out, cannot inhabit those positions. In particular, what Hegel thought was that a form of life becomes uninhabitable when the giving and asking for reasons in a form of life, when the reasons you give people for what you're doing, the reasons you demand from them about what they are doing, when those very reasons seem to become unreasonable, uh, such that that whole activity of giving and asking for reasons suddenly becomes alienating, suddenly ceases to make any sense. Now, Hegel thought that you could, and I'll refer to this a, a 